here's an amazing question where you need to find the missing values. Missing values are represented by the question mark and are located on the outside and inside the star. Star is hosted inside the diamond. And this combined figure has numbers around it. For example, number 7 is at 11 o'clock. Number 28 at 1 o'clock. Then comes the missing number at 5 o'clock. And then there is a number 448 at 8 o'clock. In the center of the combined shape, there is also a missing number represented by the question mark. You have four different choices for the final value. Choice A, 98 and 1521. Choice B, 76 and 1629. Choice C, 101 and 1829. And last but not least, choice D, 112 and 1792. Take a close look at the shape to see if you can replace question marks with the correct value. Are you ready? I am on my end moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. If problem seems very unusual for you, the problem of solving it is very typical. You need to look for patterns. And the pattern here is that the next value calculated as a previous value multiplied by 4. Values increment clockwise starting at 11 o'clock. And the missing value in the middle of the star is calculated last. Let's use the formula to calculate the missing value. First value at 11 o'clock is 7. Next value is 28, which is calculated as 7 multiplied by 4. Then we come to the first missing value at 5 o'clock. And missing value is calculated as 28 multiplied by 4, which equals 112. Next value at 8 o'clock is 112 multiplied by 4, which equals 448. And then the missing value in the center of the star is 448 multiplied by 4, which equals 1792. So the correct answer here is choice D, 112 and 1792. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here is an amazing question which truly tests your analytical skills. You are presented with four sets of 3x3 three three matrices. Each matrix has nine numbers. And in matrix 4, there are three missing numbers that you need to calculate. You are presented with four different choices. Choice A, missing numbers might be 54, 68, and 105. Choice B, missing numbers might be 55, 78, and 97. Choice C is represented by the numbers 69, 80, and 115. And then choice D is 74, 88, and 125. Give yourself a little bit of time, maybe 20 to 30 seconds by pausing this video to see if you can come up with the solution. And as usual, I am moving forward to reveal you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. I think it's very obvious and you probably recognize the pattern that's happening here. Numbers are calculated based on the formula. If we break down the matrix into columns A, B and C and then add numbers to the rows 1, 2 and 3, the formula can be summarized as B1 is calculated as A1 multiplied by 3 and C1 is calculated as B1 minus 4. So to calculate the missing numbers in row 1, we need to multiply 18 by 3, which would equal 54, and then 54 minus 4 equals 50. For row 2, the calculations will be 24 multiplied by 3 equals 72, and then 72 minus 4 equals 68. And last but not least, row 3 is calculated as 35 multiplied by 3 equals 105, and 105 minus 4 equals 101. So the correct answer is choice A, 54, 68, and 105. Here is an exceptional question to help determine how well can you navigate and determine the direction. Early morning, Samantha started walking toward the rising sun. After covering some distance, she turned right, then again to the right, and after covering more distance, she again turns to the right. Which direction Sam is facing right now? You have four different choices. A. East 
choice B, west, choice C, south, choice D, north. Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can answer this question. One tip here might be to draw a diagram to help you with the direction. And I'm moving forward myself to help you with my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. Let's start from the beginning here. When Sam started walking early morning and faces sun, it means that she faces east, because sun is rising in the east. After Sam turned to the right, means that she faces south now. If her first direction, shown by the ray AB, after she turns right, it's shown by the ray BC. Turning again to the right means that now Sam is facing west, which is displayed by the ray CD. And then last but not the least turn, after Sam covers more distance, she again turns to the right, which means that now she is facing north, which is shown by the ray DE. So the correct answer here is choice D, north. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. A lot of you are interested and ask me, how can I help others? One of the ways you can help other people is by sharing the latest questions you see as part of the assessment test. And when you share, please make sure to also include how you answered them. Please share the question you recently encountered in the comment section of this video. And if you know the answers, please share them as well. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Here's an amazing question to test your business math skills. You're presented with the set of numbers in the compass-like figure. And you need to add up all the numbers inside the shapes and then divide the sum by two. You need to calculate what would be the result of this calculation. And you have four different choices. Choice A, 9. Choice B, 12. Choice C, 18. And choice D, 24. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time, maybe pause this video and give yourself 10 to 20 seconds to do the calculations. I am pretty sure you figured it out, so I'm moving forward to share with you my version. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. The math here is pretty straightforward. You need to do 7 minus 3 plus 9 plus 5 in parentheses and then divide the sum by 2. The result would be 18 divided by 2, which would be equal to 9. And this is my choice for the correct answer. What's interesting about this question is that there's a lot of way to get to the incorrect answer. For example, if you forget to divide by 2, there is an answer for that. Also, if you don't see the negative number and forget to divide by 2, there is a choice for that as well. And if you just forget the negative number, there is a choice for that as well. Which tells me that you have to read the instructions carefully. Hopefully you're one of those people who does it all the time and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here's a very interesting question to test your spatial reasoning. You are presented with partial square and you need to find the missing shape to build the full square. You have four different choices to choose from to complete the square. Choices A, B, C and D. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. And on my end, I am moving forward to share with you the correct solution. As you might have figured out, the correct choice here is choice D. And to get to this answer, you need to look at the shape which fits perfectly to match the edges. Since this is the 5x5 five five square, choice D is the perfect shape because it matches perfectly to create a full square. Hopefully you've nailed this question on your own and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here's an amazing question where you need to find the next shape in the sequence. You're presented with the series of circles. Circles are of a different configuration and have variety of different shapes inside. You have four different choices to choose from. Choices A, B, C and D. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the solution. Maybe give yourself 10 to 15 seconds. This is about as much time as you get on the real test. And on my end, I am moving forward to share with you my version. And obviously, if you have a better solution, please make sure to share in comments. Remember, I mentioned variety of different objects. So let's look closely at what those objects are. We have internal lines, 
we have arrows and we have corner triangles. And there are multiple patterns in this diagram for all of these objects, for internal lines, for arrows and for corner triangles. For example, internal lines are increasing incrementally by one. If we look at the original sequence, we see that the first object has two internal lines, next one has three internal lines, and the object following it has four internal lines, which means that the next object in the sequence should have five lines. Arrows are also incrementally increasing by one. We see that the first object has one arrow, second object has two arrows, and then the third object has three arrows, which means that the next object in the sequence should have four arrows. And then the last but not least pattern are the corner triangles. We see, if you look closely, you see that corner triangles are increasing by two. For example, first object has two corner triangles, second object has four, third object has six, which means that the next object in the sequence should have eight. Based on these calculations, the correct answer is choice B. This matches all of these patterns. Do you see it differently? Please make sure to share in comments. Here is one of very interesting questions to test your analytical skills. You're presented with three ratios, 63 to 369, 47 is to 7411, and then you have a third ratio where 86 is related to question mark. And you need to determine the question mark based on the four different choices. Choice A. 8613, choice B 8611, choice C 6813, and then choice D 6814. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can come up with the solution. Ready or not, I can't wait and I'm moving forward to reveal the final solution to you. As usual, my advice to you to solve this and other similar types of challenges, you need to look for patterns. And the pattern here is that AB is related to BA plus B plus A. So you need to reverse the digits and add together the digits to obtain the final digits. Let's look at the sample. So 63 is related to 369. So what we did here, we swapped 3 and 6, making 3 the first digit, 6 the second digit, and then we added 3 plus 6, and end result of this is 9. We came up with the second ratio in a similar way. 47 is related to 74, where we swapped the digits, concatenated with the sum of 7 and 4, which is 11. So to get to the correct solution for 86, we need to swap 6 and 8, and then add 8 plus 6, which equals 14. So the correct answer here is choice D, 6814. Hopefully you've nailed this question, enjoyed this solution, and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. And now I have a question for you to test your skills. You're presented with the series of objects, and you need to determine next object in the sequence. Please choose one of the following four choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. Do you see the correct answer? Please make sure to post your version in comments. This would allow me to give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck. Here is the very interesting problem which tests your analytical skills. You are presented with multiple diamond groups. Each diamond group has green diamonds as well as gray diamonds. Underneath of each diamond group there are numbers and they are 18, 32, 50, and then comes the missing number. You can select the missing number out of four possible choices. Choice A, 76. Choice B, 84. Choice C, 98. And then choice D, 100. Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can come up with the approach to solve this challenge. Keep in mind that you can always pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution. On my end, I'm moving forward to reveal you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. You are probably tired hearing on this channel, but my advice to you to solve these challenges, always look for patterns. And the pattern here 
represents association between the numeric value under diamond group as well as the number of gray diamonds. The pattern I see here is that the value could be calculated as 2 multiplied by number of diamonds and then multiplied again by the number of diamonds. Ultimately, value can be 2 multiplied by the square of the number of diamonds. Let's look at the example. For example, first diamond group has 3 gray diamonds. 2 multiplied by 3 and then again multiplied by 3 equals 2 multiplied by 9 and equals 18. The next diamond group has 4 diamonds and 2 multiplied by 4 square equals 2 multiplied by 16 equals 32. The next one has 5 diamonds. 2 multiplied by 5 square equals 50. The missing number has a group with 7 gray diamonds. To calculate the missing number, we need to multiply 2 by 7 squared, which is equal to 2 multiplied by 49, which equals 98. So the correct choice here is choice C, 98. Hopefully you've nailed this question on your own and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Can you tell us how many questions did you answer correctly? Please make sure to post in the comment section of this video to share with others. And now let's continue to get you ready for the test. Here is an amazing question which tests your analytical skills, logical reasoning skills, as well as your knowledge of employment process. You need to arrange the words into a logical sequence. And the words are phone interview, job search, employment start date, job application, in-person interview, create resume, and last one but not least is an assessment test. You have four different choices, choices A, B, C, and D. Take a close look, maybe pause this video to see if you can come up with the answer. What's interesting about this question is that answering it will not just help you to test your skills, but also will help you set expectations about a job search. Let's move forward and get to the my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. In the typical job search process, after preparing the resume, job seeker can start searching for the job and apply for the job position. This is called job application process. After an employer determines the match between the position and the resume of the candidate, candidate is called up for the phone interview and then for in-person interview. The next step in the process is an assessment test. If candidate passes job interview and an assessment test, job offer is made and then person starts on the job. So the correct choice here is choice B. Starting with the creation of the resume, then going and doing job search, then applying for the job using job application, then going through the phone interview and in-person interview process, going through the assessment test, and finally starting on the new position. Do you see it differently? Please make sure to post your version of the solution in comments. A lot of you are interested and ask me, how can I help others? One of the ways you can help other people is by sharing the latest questions you see as part of the assessment test. And when you share, please make sure to also include how you answered them. Please share the question you recently encountered in the comment section of this video. And if you know the answers, please share them as well. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Here's a very interesting question to see how quickly and effectively you can solve the challenge. You're presented with three triangles. Each triangle has numbers in the corners as well as the number in the middle. First triangle has numbers 4, 18 and 2 and number in the middle 3. Second triangle has outside numbers 6, 56 and 1 and has 8 in the middle. And then the third triangle has number 3 in the middle and numbers 5 and 103 on the outside. In the upper right corner of the third triangle, you have a missing number, which you need to calculate out of four different choices. Choices A, 7, choice B, 10, choice C, 20, and choice D, 30. Do you see the answer? The solution is very obvious, but I would like you to try to get to it on your own. Ready or not, I am moving forward to reveal you the solution. If you have any suggestions how to solve these types of challenges faster, please share in comments. One phrase that you hear on this channel the most 
is always look for patterns. And then the pattern here is that the top number divided by the sum of the bottom two numbers on the outside of the triangle is equal the middle number inside of the triangle. So let's look at the first two examples. 18 divided on 4 plus 2 equals 18 divided by 6 equals 3. In the second middle triangle, 56 divided by 6 plus 1 equals 56 divided by 7 and equals 8. So to calculate the missing number, we need to build an equation. 105 divided 5 plus missing number equals 3. To calculate missing number, we need to divide 105 by 3 and subtract 5. 35 minus 5 equals 30. So the answer is choice D, 30. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now can easily solve these types of challenges on the test. A lot of people ask how can I help on this channel? One of the best ways to help is to help other people answer the questions that they're getting. If you know the answer to the question you see in comments, please post the answer in the comment section of this video. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Here's an amazing question to test your analytical and spatial reasoning skills. You need to determine how many rectangles are present here in the picture. Take a close look at the shape presented here and choose one of four following choices. Choice A, 8. Choice B, 17. Choice C, 18. And then choice D, 20 rectangles. Do you know the answer? Give yourself a few seconds, maybe pause this video to see if you can count all of them. Are you ready? Let's move forward and I'll share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you see a different answer, please make sure to post in comments. Believe it or not, but I counted 18 rectangles here in this shape. Let me show them all to you. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Do you see a different number? Please make sure to post in comments. I would like to ask you to participate in our daily assessment test challenge. I post new question every day in the community tab of YouTube channel and give you an opportunity to answer it and try it. And I post answer in comments next day. So please make sure to check it out to test your knowledge. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Here's one of my favorite questions to test your verbal reasoning as well as your knowledge of English alphabet. You need to determine the missing letter of English alphabet to replace question mark. You're presented with 3x3 three three matrix and this matrix has letters P, T, R, O, Q, S, M, N and then the missing letter, which you need to select from one of four possible choices. Choice A, U. Choice B, letter Y. Choice C, letter X. And choice D, letter V. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can come up with the solution. I have full confidence that you found it, but just in case, I am moving forward to share with you my answer. If you were studying the alphabet, you might remember the sequence. The sequence of letters in the middle of the alphabet, which would be M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T. You would remember that the missing letter in the sequence, the next one in the sequence, would be letter U. So, to answer this question, you need to understand and determine that starting from letter M, all consecutive letters appear in the matrix and the missing letter in the sequence is letter U. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please give us a like and consider subscribing. Thanks for all your endorsement, support and patronage. For additional helpful information, please make sure to check out links in the description. For detailed list of available resources, I encourage you to check out resources page on our website, howtoanalyzedata.net slash resources. If you know someone who would benefit from this content, please consider sharing the link. Please leave the feedback, corrections or suggestions in comments. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.